What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. We're on part two of building a shed roof over a deck. And in this one, we're really gonna dive into our rafter angles and our cuts. So by the end of this video, you'll have a much better understanding of how to figure out all of your angles when you're building your project. Make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. Lagging it in for justice. Sure are, sure are. That seems sarcastic, but uh, we are indeed. So, do you know Jay Bronzone? Are you filming? Yeah. Hit it. Hit it. Hit it, yeah, hit it. So we're getting our beams on top of our sky lifts. See, we just have to route this out a little bit. The, the saddles are a little bit smaller than our triple uh, two by 12 here, but we didn't want it to be loose, so we got the closest size and just have to route out about a quarter inch off of each side. And then we put our waterproof a boot on here and we've got Tyvek over top so it's waterproof for now. Again, this is all gonna be concealed inside of our ceiling so it wouldn't really be necessary. Are you, is it like you're pushing down my head? <laughs> is it? Three, two, one. Did it work? No. Three, good. two, one. Did it work? Kinda, yeah. All right, so even though this is gonna be completely concealed at the end and it's gonna be roofed in, waterproofed, uh, we still wanna have this on here. We've got the Tyvek underneath our shingles and it's waterproof for now because we've opened up the soffit. What are you doing? <laughs> We're gonna get this locked in for justice and then we can take some measurements, make sure this beam and this beam are running nice and parallel. We'll mark this out and then we can get our measurements for our rafters. Ants always wanted to be just like me. You guys are wearing the same outfit and, the, and it's like gray hat, everything. It's more of a grige. I think the word's grage. Grage? Yeah. What, how you pronounce that? Yeah. No, I think it's grige. But you wouldn't say beige. It's gray and beige. <laughs> grage. No, it's like green beige. Grige. It's not green at all. No, I would say it's firmly gray, but. Oh, yeah, it's totally gray. All right, I'm going to start unbanding this stuff. I'll crown them, all start right. stacking them. Yeah. And real quick, all you people at home, oh, he's framing with screws, he's framing with screws. I'm not framing with screws. I'm cinching these two plies together so I can get them nice and tight, and then I'll finish with nails. Calm down. And, I'll, and another thing, oh, I'll just use a clamp. I'll just carry, who, who, who's carrying a clamp on their belt all day long? I know I'm not. I'm gonna use a couple screws, get it tight, and move on. Stop it. That's it for me, I'm, I'm done with that. Stop with the screws and the frame and talk. Just watch and learn. Just let him go everybody, he'll tire himself out. He'll be napping pretty soon at this rate. We've got all of our two by tens here. This is regular uh, hem fur, not treated. This is gonna be our roof rafters. Two by tens by twenties. What we wanna do is just unband the whole pack. We wanna crown them. This one's, this one's kind of uh, pretty straight. So, but we want to stack them up on the horses and get all the crowns facing the same direction. So crowns are going to be facing this way. And then when we lay out our rafters, we cut them all. All the crowns are in the same direction. It's nice and organized. And, uh, you know, we can also pick through the pile, make sure if there's any pieces that don't look as good. We can use those for our back framing or accessory framing and uh, be good to go. It's getting spicy, that means we're about to get a lot of work done here. How do I know if I'm on my line? Just keep rocking it back and forth two or three more times and you should be good. Yeah. So that's six by, so another inch and a half is deck. That wasn't so hard, was it? <laughs> what are we doing? Or you can adjust this. I'm thinking we could also just rip it down to eight inches and then just Cut them. I'll need it. We flush it up at the top. No, because I I, I want to because depending on this part, I don't know what the height. Is. I'd rather just do it how I want to do it. Well, it'll still be in plain with I that. I understand it's two by eight, and then top. our face will just hang down below that a little bit. Well, you got to lob this end rafter flat. Can I just do it yeah, how I want to yeah. do it? Yeah, go for it. We got pretty much all this figured out, so let's backtrack a little bit. I'll show you how we got to this point. It's a lot of back and forth. I'm gonna summarize it for you. Come along. First step, we get our laser. We have both beams up. Now we need to figure out what is the exact height difference between them. 
set up your laser and it'll go like beep 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 I made a mark right here. Then I measured from this mark up to the top of the beam. Gave me 62 and a quarter. And we go over here. We put this here, we go beep 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 Right here, that's our mark. Measure from here to the top of this beam. Gives us 28 and a half. Now we have our numbers. Let's go over to the lumber pile. We'll figure it all out and get our template cut. One more thing before you go over there, figure out your run. So we got a measurement from our beam, inside a beam, because they're gonna sit flush, to outside of this beam, and we got 240 and 13 sixteenths. Now we're ready. So what we got here, so we need to figure out three things for a roof measurement. We have our run, our rise, and that'll give us our pitch. So we got run, 240, 13 sixteenths. We've got our rise. Now, we take our two measurements that we had, 62 and a quarter minus 28 and a half, that gives us 33 and three quarter. So that's our rise, right? No, no, no. We need to subtract the height above plate. So the top of our rafter down to our bird's mouth cut, that measurement, we need to subtract that because we wanna find out the top of the beam, not the top of the rafter. So we just chose eight inches for our height above plate. So we're gonna subtract eight inches from that. So that will give us 25 and three quarter. So now we have our run and our rise. We can put that into a construction calculator. It's gonna spit out a pitch for us. And our pitch is, what was it? One, one and one sixteenth? Put it in the construction calculator. That's all right. I'm just gonna say 6.1 degrees. Uh, 25 and three quarter. That'd be like 6.2. It's over a quarter. That's our pitch. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so we've got our run, we've got our rise. We put that into a construction calculator. That's gonna spit out our pitch. And it gave us one and five sixteenths over 12. So every foot, we are going to rise one inch and five sixteenths. You convert that into a decimal and it's 6.1 degrees. It's not really a decimal, it's like a degree. Convert it to degrees in the calculator, 6.1. So now I'm gonna show you how we mark out the rafter. What we need to do, throw our speed square on there and we're gonna go right to the edge of this. And we're gonna pivot off of there just, just barely over six degrees. Now we'll mark this side of it, we'll cut. So now what we wanna do, we hook the top of our ridge cut all the way down. Whoa, 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 whoa. Should've gave myself a little more space here. 20 and 13 sixteenths. So here's one of our issues. We're right at the end of our board. This is a 20 foot board. It was gonna take a lot longer to get 24s in. So we just went with this, but we're fine. What we're gonna do, get a scrap piece, make sure that it's nice and square. And what I'm gonna do is basically extend this past just over six degrees. Now we're gonna measure down our height above plate, which we decided was eight. We'll pull off of that 90 degrees. This is gonna create our bird's mouth cut. This is essentially where our beam is gonna be. This right here is the outside of our beam. We're not gonna be able to hit that because our piece is shorter than that. Not a problem. We're still gonna use this mark. I'm gonna burn two inches and I'm gonna go to seven and a quarter. So essentially that's five and a quarter off of the outside of our beam. So that was just a placeholder. Now we've got our finished cut. We'll cut this little bit off right here. That's gonna plane down with the outside of our beam. We'll cut this right here. And we still have, all we need bearing on that is at least three and a half inches. We're gonna have a little bit over four sitting on top of that beam. And then we're gonna scab in our overhang detail and uh, we'll be good to go. So that's what you need to figure out for any roof rafter, your rise, your run, and that'll spit out your pitch. You need to know two out of the three to figure out the third and uh, get yourself a nice construction calculator app. And what's the construction calculator app you have? Construction construction Pro Master, Master Pro, whatever. I don't know. Uh, that's a good one. And uh, yeah, it'll spit out all these numbers for you. You'd be good to go. All right, look at that. Yeah, but we got our first three up, middle and two ends. They're all sitting beautiful. So now that we're cutting off of a template for our rafters, they'll all go in nice. Everything's running nice and parallel. Love that. Beautiful, all right, all right. Here's the only other thing that we had to do. Here's our ridge cut. Come around here. We just have this tiny little notch right here. That's gonna be so our hanger fits in there real nice. So we don't want it like just barely on there and coming in an angle. That's, that's, that's hackery. We don't need that. There you go. You traced it? Okay. All right.
rafter time. This is gonna turn out for a really nice before and rafter shot. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. There we go. Hey, you want some uh, mayonnaise on your sandwich? Nah, I'm good. Oh, you must be a mayonnaise alcohol. Mayonnaise addicted loser. John! Can you make them just like an eighth bigger? You wanna know how you know you have a good cup, man? I got hit. I got my end, my Eve end nailed out. This is where it needs to go. Cut looks beautiful, and I'm just like about an eighth inch high. Which is, you can just give it a little tappy tappy. Plug it in there nice and tight, finish it off. Good cut, man. That's what we call the happy. Say it again. That's what we call the happy tappy. I just, uh, some days I can't with him. <laughs> It's like way short. Oh, never mind. So once we have our roof framed, we have to frame into another roof. So that's where a cricket is involved or I'm just creating a valley. So what I had to do is I had to level our beam across and then that gives us our point where our roof will finish. And then I have these lines snap, which is our framing of our top of our roof over here. So I connect those lines and it creates our new valley. And then you just frame accordingly to where this, this wood is set to where it's underneath of the sheathing so that would be considered my nailer. Looks like I have two more rafters to put in, and then we're good to go. Cover it with plywood, let the roofers do their thing. I think we're going with like a rubber membrane roof because we have such a flat roof. And uh, good as new. I think this is charged. Charging, blocking. This is my favorite one to do. Double dribble? Yeah. Oh yeah. Isn't it, wait, isn't it like this? Up or down, don't matter. Double dribble. Should be a basketball ref. I think the squeaking of the shoes was kind of getting on my nerves after a while. <laughs> No, it's the parents that know all the rules. <coughs> That's what I say. Technical, you're out of here. Rafters are all up, time for sheathing. Let's go. All right, time to uh, work on some protuberances here. So we have some existing penetrations coming through uh, our existing roof. We need to extend them up through our new roof. What we had was uh, a drain vent for a kitchen sink in here. We have a range hood and we have another uh, probably bathroom, maybe a laundry room vent over there that needs to come through as well. So uh, it's gonna be pretty simple. We can extend it, it's galvanized pipe. So I talked to our plumber, he said, uh, just get a Fernco and you can do galvanized to PVC. Just have it poke through the roof and then our roofers are gonna do all the flashing and we'll be good to go. You can see on the existing sheathing here, look at this, look how wet that was. So that is because the uh, boot flashing on top of this, our, our vent was not flashed at all. So you can see, it takes a long time for you to see it actually in your house. This is literally soaking wet. There was water getting in here for a long time. Uh, the insulation is a tiny bit wet, but it's gonna have to soak through all of this, then go into your drywall, soak through that. So by the time you actually see it inside your house, you've had a problem for a long time. Honestly, it's a good thing that we got here when we did because it's only really a matter of time before this was really uh, causing some serious problems. So we're gonna put this up here. Our roofer is gonna flash it and make sure that this does not happen on our roof above this.
All right, so we got our roof going on today. Finished up this cricket. We've got, you know, kind of a little bit of a complicated kind of situation here. You saw them building this. We've got this valley that kind of cuts off, diverts over there. Now we've got Gasper here. Jason is on site and uh, we're ready to put down this roof. We're gonna take care of it. He's got his camera out. Check out his YouTube channel. Gasper Roofing on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We decided to, uh, under Jason's uh, recommendation, tear up all the shingles all the way up to the ridge so that everything here, this whole back area of the house is completely new. And then when they go to get the rest of the roof replaced, if there's just a couple feet of shingles up here and there becomes a leak, it's going to be finger pointing. The person that put on the new roof is going to say it was his fault. He's going to say, no, it wasn't. So this way we have no issues whatsoever. We don't have to worry about the new roof being, you know, properly flashed or the old roof flashed underneath of the new roof. No problems whatsoever. So we're going to put down an EPDM roof system here. So this is a flat roof system because we have such a low pitch. We're gonna see in a little bit how they get that done, but uh, first time we've done it on our job, I'm excited to see it. This is beautiful. Definitely not the proper way. We want to replace it and fix it properly. I'll show you a trick because I, if the hose drops, I won't be able to get it. So Jason's up here uh, just kind of evaluating uh, the current roof and how they did it and we got a couple things that we want to point out. We've got way too big of a ridge vent here. Two and a half inches. What's the ridge vent supposed to be? It's one inch? Two, one to one and a half. One to one and a half. So you can see we got we got some big gaps here. It looks like it's probably even bigger in some of these areas. Crazy. And then we've got over here, it's not cut back at all. We've got like maybe a quarter inch gap here. So pay attention to those little details. The roof vent's not doing anything if it's like completely closed. So one thing that we're gonna do here, we do have uh, baffles going up in these bays. So we're gonna have to have some ventilation in where the original soffit was so that as hot air escapes out this ridge vent, when that hot air comes out, it's gonna suck new air into our intake. So we need to make sure that that's open. Otherwise, it's gonna it's gonna what cause some some mold, some some so moisture. The, so the bigger enemy is not is the moisture. You don't want moisture because what moisture is gonna do wood is organic. So the fibers are gonna do this, and then it's gonna start pushing the nail through the shingle. And then you're gonna have roof leaks. That's why the rule of thumb for the proper ventilation: air comes in, air goes out. The whole purpose of that is to have two temperatures, not the living space temperature and the outside temperature. Because the attic is building up all the heat, it will create a third temperature. And when there is two different temperatures without insulation in between, it will start creating, it will start sweating, creating moisture. And that's, you don't want moisture. Moisture leads to mold, mold leads to allergies, and allergies leads to death. Death. Yeah, you don't want that. We don't want that. Not so, at all. There you go. Heard it here first, or maybe second, but uh, do it right. Do it tight, or don't do it tight and leave a gap for the air. The air has to flow. All right, we got our insulation board down on the roof over the ply. And uh, Jason, why don't you tell us about this a little bit? What do we got here? We got these little uh, scuppers, I like to call them. Is that what you call them in the biz? No, it's called insulation plates, three inch. And then we use, let me get one of the screws. We use a heavy thread, you can see it there. It's called number 14 screw to hold the insulation down. Yeah. Where is the pico? Where are the platas? Platas? Chapas. Chapas. Plata o promo? Plata for your lead. Yep. So to install this. Okay. And then I have to this. <laughs> I see. You see the difference on the plates? If you can tell. This one has have like a little bar plate, little spikes. And what it does, it will hold the roll and prevent it from moving around. Also, they're thicker. Like I can't bend this one. This one I could. Not even. But this ones are heavier duty. They're heavy duty because they got to hold the roll down. And it's just a another step that we make sure so we don't have problems down the road there you have it and uh this actually is not a hat but we call it a witch's hat this is gonna be our 
our pipe flashing, correct? Yes. So, They're specially made for the system, and you see the steps down later when we install it. There's certain steps that have to go in before we install this. We don't want no problems. No problems, no worries, just good times, baby. It's cold. But I'll tell you what, this roof is hot. Whoa, nice job. Nice job. You're welcome. Woo! So now we've got the EPDM roof over our entire new low pitch section and then into our existing ridges on both sides. We've got all new shingles, new ridge cap, ridge vent. What do you call it? Ridge vent, ridge cap? Ridge vent and ridge cap. So ridge vent and ridge cap. It looks freaking awesome. We're not going to have any issues here, right? Never. Never. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So now we got to pretty much it, right? Yeah, we got to come back once you guys finish with the fascia. Yep. The fetch and done. Are you watertight? Love it. Locked in Love for it. justice. Locked in for justice. So check this out right here. We've got the EPDM overhanging our fascia here. That's going to go down. We're going to do our fascia on top of that. And then our drip edge goes on top of our fascia board. And then it's going to go on with some seam tape. Is that right? Same, same right here. Yep. So it's six inch, we prime and then we put that and we roll it down and that's what is gonna make that water tight around the edges and on the bottom. Beautiful. And worst case scenario, that doesn't stay watertight, say 10 years down the road, we still got that EPDM bladder overhanging, double covered, we're good to go. So, love that. Looks good. That's it, right? That's it, we're done. All right, let's go home. We're even putting the lights back up. Look at that, professionals here. All right, we got our roof all finished up. So hopefully you learned a couple things when you're building your own project. A shed roof like this can be pretty simple. If you just follow the right steps, take your time, you'll be good to go. So make sure you hit subscribe, stay tuned. And until next time, this has been Premier Outdoor Living. We got our good friend Craig here. Craig Scheller, Scheller Outdoor Living all the way from Kansas City, coming off a big loss for his Chiefs. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> a couple of losses. <laughs> yeah. But uh, check out his YouTube channel. Full-time lapses, pools, yeah. stuff that, you know, hopefully we can do one day. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Good to see you. Yeah. Thanks for having me on.